Hey everyone, it's Christian, and it's been a little while here, but I wanted to uh, say uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone out there that watches the vlog. And I'm going to do a palm review here on Zambia Antillarum, Antilliarum, I should say, uh, also known as a zombie palm. Now, uh, this palm is native to the Dominican Republic and possibly Haiti as well. It's throughout Hispaniola. Um, it is closely related to Cocothrinax, and you can see in the leaflets that it's very much has the same uh <clears throat> the fronds of the same structure they're segmented similarly let me find one that's kind of more spread out here you can see that right there i get the shadow out uh same kind of hastula and uh <clears throat> it it basically it differs in uh two aspects one is actually both are re relatively obvious the first one is it is extremely spiny in fact those are probably the worst spines i can think of on any palm and it's basically impossible to grab this palm uh, by the trunk with any means even with a strap so you kind of have to do it by uh, the, just the root ball and, and kind of the crown very in a, <clears throat> in a very fragile manner so this palm is actually qu quite hard to move when it gets larger um, the second is that it clumps so there's a naturally clumping palm this is not three or four uh, plants put to, uh, planted together so um, it is a full sun lover, and it's relatively cold hardy. It's, uh, I would say it could take the uh, upper 20s just fine, and I've seen it uh, growing around Tampa, even in Orlando and areas like that uh, that are a little bit chillier uh, in the wintertime. And uh, <clears throat> it seems to like alkaline soil more, much like a lot of Cocoa Thrinax uh, and or serpentine soil, um, although it doesn't grow with most Cocoa Thrinax in... Cuba, it does uh, share a lot of the same characteristics as I mentioned, with the same fibrous trunk that uh, you can see just with, with spines added now. Uh, it's kind of like an evolutionary uh, kind of uh, juncture from Cocothrinax, I guess you could say. It does have a silvery underside of the leaflets, as you can see there, and um, it is a pretty slow grower, as I mentioned. Uh, it's, it probably would, this, this palm's probably 25 years old. Uh, it's probably been this size for maybe 10 years, but getting it from, say, a size of this little, these little offsets here to, um, you know, a large plant can take 10 to 15 years easily, just a few, you know, just five or six feet of trunk. So, um, be careful when you're around these. They're, they're really nice. They're excellent hedges because, uh, no one's going to walk through them, uh, without getting severely, uh, cut up. So if you want to plant them really tight, uh, in your the side of your yard or the back of your yard, uh, go for it. <clears throat> um, and most people that that collect cocoa thrinax thrinax will also collect zambia as kind of it's as with, with it being related because it, it has the same visual uh, characteristics. So um, the seed on this palm also looks the seed looks almost identical to cocoa thrinax. The uh, the fruit, however, is white which can make it easy to identify from Cocothrinax if you're just trying to find, if you have seed, let's say you collect seed of Cocothrinax and a Zambia, don't know which one is which, the white fruit will always be the Zambia. Now there's only one other fruit that is related to Cocothrinax that is white like that, and that's Shipia concolor. Um, and they're much larger, so they're, they're easier to tell apart than the Zambia seed. So uh, you'll you'll notice that they kind of just look like Cocothrinax seed, but just with a white flesh to it. Uh, it's pretty easy to grow. Just gonna when you germinate them, you're gonna treat them just like Cocoa Thrinax. Uh, a lot of heat and uh, in a well drained mix with a lot of water, and just crank it up. They like it in the in the 90 degree Fahrenheit, 100 degree Fahrenheit range. So you're talking about 35 to 40 Celsius, if I'm correct there. I think I I think that's about right. So um, this one's a little bit windswept. Uh, this was planted here as a as a specimen, so it hasn't didn't grow here from a seed. They tend to hold more leaflets when they're grown in the place where they were young, if that makes any sense. So this one would have a whole lot more uh, head to it if it, uh, if it grew up here. That's the only other thing I've noticed about zombies uh, when they're transplanted is they don't tend to hold as many leaves as when they were planted young, uh, say from like a three or seven gallon plant. So there's actually a lot of them here. There's uh, five or six specimens. There's one here. This one here is a little bit devoid of leaflets. <clears throat> and then you have this one and three more in various condition. Um, these are tend to be, they're irregularly irrigated, so that probably plays a part in uh, their health. So hopefully uh, the owner 
uh, has that, that fixed and um, these can look full once again. So I hope you enjoyed that vlog. I wanted to get another one in before the sun set here, here on the 23rd of December. So uh, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and uh, subscribe and you'll see many more palm videos, uh, past, present, and future. And uh, if you have any questions about Zombie or Cocoa Thrinax or other Caribbean palmate palms, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And I will see you guys next time.